Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to do a uh, garden tour of uh, two sides of this uh, beautiful landscape uh, in my neighborhood. Uh, I left these folks a note a week or so ago and uh, they were kind enough to uh, let me in their yard. I've got construction uh, next to me, people walking by and I'm on a very busy corner. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys will be able to hear what I'm actually saying out here. But this is a beautiful uh, shade uh, foundation planting and a beautiful porch here behind me. I'm going to start over here on uh, one side where their driveway entrance is and just work my way around to the uh, front of the house. And I'll give you some wide angles in here so you can see, uh, so you can see the entire space. So I'm on the side of their house that faces uh, north. It's got a, a beautiful screen porch that comes out on the side here. They've pretty much surrounded it with evergreen shrubs here. Uh, they've got, they, can, they can get out through the door and kind of peek out, but they've created some privacy for their seating area inside of the porch because, like I say, we are on a busy road. Truck just drove by right there. I love this camellia back here that's coming up over the uh, fence in the backyard. I like the use of camellias where you want to get some height, but you don't want it to get completely out of control. Camellias are slower growing, so it took a long time for that thing to be that size. It's you know in full bloom now, or just a little past peak bloom. But that Camellia japonica took a long time to get there. If, if they'd have put something there that grew really, really quickly, it would have reached that size and just continued to you know cause problems, honestly, in the future. Their actual power line is coming in right above it, right there. So um, great use, another, another one on this side of the porch right here. And then on the two sides of the door, they've got um, some azaleas. These are larger leaf azaleas. These are uh, um, indica um, azaleas, probably formosa. Formosa is a purple um, one. That's what it looks like to me from the, from the leaf. On that, uh, screening their backyard over here, they've got some emerald uh, arborvita lining up. And then they have a gate that goes into their uh, backyard space right there. Here's a look into their uh, what they've created, a very private uh, backyard patio space in a very urban setting here are those emerald arborvita they're using as a screen right there uh, one on this side of the gate as well again there's that uh, camellia japonica up there uh, there's various uh, uh, planter barrels uh, here and there and there's a, a big leaf hydrangea coming back from behind one single liriope right there kind of like that uh, just that one one liriope by itself and then uh, there's this azalea and the screen porch and uh, they've got a, a sky pencil holly in a container uh, right here and uh, that container's been there a while it's got moss growing on the uh, lip of it and it looks great but so i'm going to just continue to back out uh, off of this side and you can see how all this comes together on the side from where they park they can go into the uh, backyard space or into the uh, screen porch space right there this lawn is fescue for anybody that would have that have that question most of the uh, lawns in my area, if they're in the sun, are going to be uh, warm season grass like zoysia, zoysia or centipede uh, or Bermuda and shadier spaces like this. We're going to try to have fescue. And I know you guys can hear that hammering going on over here. He's planted a green giant arborvita right here on the corner. That thing's going to get ginormous, but it should offer some screen from this uh, corner right here. And this place is completely surrounded by uh, crepe myrtles that were planted in the hell strip. Uh, between the sidewalk and the road and i don't i don't know they may outdate them living here i have no idea if they planted these uh, or not before i start talking about all the things that are under it this is a uh, evergreen magnolia right here uh, magnolia grandiflora of some variety it might be little gem honestly that's just gotten very very big it's got a small leaf on it so i'm guessing it's that's a possibility uh if you uh Everything else that I'm showing you is kind of underneath it uh, and it's created, a created the shady space that I'm talking about here. So I think you can see the azalea and the camellia on the corner here. This is kind of the northeast corner of the front yard right here. There's a, a very large uh, boxwood that's next to that azalea that was on the corner. And then another uh, large leaf azalea that's in the, in the corner back here. Another big leaf hydrangea coming out from under here and then they have one, a third uh, camellia, uh, the same variety in, in all three of these spaces uh, right here. Another big leaf hydrangea behind me here. And then they've got three vines on the front porch that we'll see. Uh, the first one is a uh, star jasmine uh, right here. And I'll show you the other two once we move down. I really love the use of color underneath this magnolia. They've got uh, 
Uh, many things with gold foliage or variegated foliage. And in a dark space like this, it really stands out. It really pops. So moving in here a little bit closer again, there's that azalea, the boxwood, another azalea in the back. And uh, I love these old concrete containers and, and statuary pieces. There's a bench that's placed right there. Um, got a plant growing over it, but still looks great. Uh, and then there's that uh, third uh, Camellia japonica in that corner. And swinging around here, this is that uh, star jasmine uh, vine that will make its way up that uh, column uh, pretty quick. This front porch is just absolutely, just absolutely beautiful. I, I love this open porch without the rail. They're very lucky to have a low front porch, so they don't require, it doesn't require having a rail around it. Uh, this is a, a variegated Carex. So let's talk about some of these, you know, bright spots or br bright features that they've put into this dark space. Uh, this, uh, um, You've got a variegated Carex here. Um, I use that Everillo uh, at my house, which is gold, but there's several different variegated ones that will work. Uh, these variegated boxwood stands out a mile away. Um, I'll give you a front on view of that. That'll be the next area we talk about there. There's some Lysimachia uh, under this tree right here, Creeping Jenny with a bright gold. Um, there's some, uh, some uh, variegated sweet flag uh, right here, which looks similar looks similar to that Carex, but it's a little different. Um, and then they've got this uh, variegated Fatsia right here. Um, variegated Fatsia is not as cold hardy as the regular green Fatsia. They have a regular green Fatsia on the other side. But we're in an urban space here in zone 7B, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, up under this tree, it's definitely frost protected and it's doing great uh, under here. They've got various perennials that are just starting to uh, to come back, I apologize for vehicles passing me while I'm doing this. Uh, there's uh, daylilies uh, popping back out of the ground here. There's a few uh, daffodils that have already uh, bloomed out, but it looks like there's a ton of perennials in here that we're not seeing because it's the end of March, and uh, which is really a testament to how beautiful the space actually is. You know, if I'm looking across here slowly, I mean, this is the winter. This other thing looks in the winter time. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Uh, there's an acanthus. Uh, right here, that's just really uh, I love the foliage on that on that plant. If I continue to uh, to come around here, there's another uh, another one of those Carex uh, right there, and uh, there's some Lamium uh, right there. It's a great shade ground cover. It tends to do kind of poorly here because of, the, of the, our clay soil. But if you put something, you won't be able to tell from this. You'll be able to tell when I go down to the road and show you the front view of this place. It's, this house is elevated well above the road. This elevation in these beds helps some of these things that like drier uh, conditions. And then moving along here, getting us closer to the uh, middle of the front door. These are uh, trailing gardenias or radicans gardenias. They've been recently uh, pruned, but that's the uh, ground cover gardenias. They'll bloom in, in May and they bloom on new wood. So you can prune these in the winter time. And uh, that gets us around to the, uh, to the middle of the front door space right here. Let me uh, grab the camera and give you a wider view of this front. So I dropped completely down to the east facing uh, sidewalk right here. They actually have a retaining wall that goes across the front of their property. It's got English ivy growing on it. And down at the other end, it's got some vinca uh, growing on it. Uh, Japanese maple that kind of overhangs it right here. And then you can, I think you can see back in there, uh, the, 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 the beds coming around to the front of the house and this beautiful porch. I love this. I just like the elevation of this property uh, quite a bit, but I wanted to let you know how high this is actually above my uh, head off of the uh, sidewalk as you're walking by. It's an interesting spot from the corner over here. You can really see in here and see all the beautiful things that they've done. But uh, from certain angles where they would want to sit in their screen porch or sit on this front porch uh, in, a, in a corner, you really can't see up there very well. So they've done a good job, you know, just picking out spots to screen, but not screening out the entire, not screening out the entire space. So uh, let's walk around uh, what will be the um, east and uh, southeast side of the front here, which is still going to be very, very shady. Typically that would be sunnier, but uh, they have a very large uh, um, shade tree in the front yard here. So before I walk up to that side up there, I will walk across this wall with you real quick. This is the uh, vinca that's growing on one side. They're in the process of uh, mulching right now, and uh, they haven't quite finished up here at the foundation. You'll see that in just a second. And again, there's this uh, ivy 
uh, growing on here. The other side, they're maintaining some turf and uh, their address is on the steps. And so I'm not gonna show you that. And then uh, right here is the uh, ivy growing on this wall. This wall gets taller uh, on this end of the property. And if we look back up in here, um, there's some uh, roses up here on the top and a, another seating bench. And uh, we'll walk up these steps now. So here's the two sides of the wall, concrete sidewalk that leads you to the front. And then these uh, kind of very large uh, stones here that uh, they created the steps out of. And then the uh, uh, sidewalk goes to two different uh, directions, two different entry doors on the front of this house. And it's just really beautiful. This is one spot right here where they're in the process of mulching, but they put all of their organic material in here and then mulch over the top of it so they're not wasting or sending that, sending that stuff um, off the property. No real, really no reason to. Right here, they've got the, uh, the variegated boxwoods on both sides here and on one side um, right there. Uh, this evergreen clematis is the uh, vine that's on the uh, left-hand side of the house right here, and it's just starting to bloom. It's fragrant, quite beautiful. Uh, these usually probably would have a few more flowers on them in uh, more sun, but uh, you know the tree definitely dominates the space here. There's also a swing in the tree right here that I'll give you a close-up up, close in a second. The clematis is there. The star jasmine uh, is over there and the middle vine right here is a smilax, which I've never shown on the channel, the garden center I worked at as a teenager. We uh, grew these and sold them. Uh, it's a, basically a tuber uh, under the ground uh, that gets uh, bigger in time and it takes a long time uh, for a smilax vine to really be able to put on a lot of growth uh, on the top. But this one is, uh, has taken off and uh, it's just really beautiful and it's an evergreen. Uh, in that space. I'm guessing there's some other perennials and things that haven't shown themselves in here. Here's some uh, hookera or hookerellas uh, right here. And mirrored on this other side, I'll back down here, are these uh, 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 gardenia radicans. And so I showed you the ones that were on that side right there. And they're mirrored on the other side of the steps. They continue to use uh, this variegated sweet flag uh, in several different places. Uh, just a really nice spot of gold color. There's some dwarf mondo grass that's growing up under uh, up under there and some right in there. And then that's some regular mondo grass uh, right there. Uh, the difference being one gets about two to three inches and the other one gets about maybe five to six inches, uh, maybe up to eight inches. Uh, more of the uh, variegated sweet flag and then uh, containers uh, just all over the place. Um, with various uh, perennial uh, things in them. That one's got a uh, chrysanthemum trying to come back in the middle of a hookera. And there's some uh, uh, strawberries growing down here. Uh, if I move around to what is the southeast uh, corner over here, we've got some uh, uh, very large liriope growing. There's another screen porch on this other side over here. It's quite nice. And then this is the green fatsia that I told you about. Uh, they bloomed beautifully in my area this past year. Um, they bloom st still has the, uh, the seed pods on the top of it right there. And then the last thing I'll show you over here is a few cast iron plants that they have growing um, right there. They've planted some pachysandra here. It hasn't taken off yet, but I guess this will be ground cover for this, this space. And then come back around this way slowly and you see this beautiful fountain. Uh, right here on this corner, which they'll be able to hear, you know, sitting sitting on this front porch uh, right here. And if I continue uh, through this area right here under the tree, uh, which has, again, has the, uh, has the swing on it uh, right there, there's a few more azaleas right here. So people walking up from this south direction right here really can't see up in here because it's elevated with the wall and then these azaleas are blocking it uh, and then right here is a uh, another uh, camellia this one looks like a, a lower growing one a camellia sasanqua of some type and another uh, hydrangea macrophylla right here and these are the roses i showed you from down below so that fatsy is up in there and i just walked along here and here's that a close-up of this japanese maple this is a, a weeping japanese maple i won't know the variety it's not even it's not leafed out right this minute but uh 
it looks great. Um, it'll, ca it'll eventually just be cascading down over this uh, wall as it grows larger, but it's, uh, when the leaves are on it during the summer, it'll create quite a bit of privacy going back up to the uh, porch area up there. So again, I'm sure there's some construction noise going on in this video. I didn't know when to shoot it that I wouldn't have gotten construction noise. I love this yard. I hope you guys do as well. I walk past here with Holly several times a week and uh, I always enjoy coming by here. This is l late March, but we've been cool and nothing has really woken up. I mean, we've got some camellias blooming and that kind of thing, but uh, really uh, there's a lot more to come back to life here. So I'm gonna try to come back later in the uh, season and show you this uh, with that kind of a second second round of life uh, really uh, in this space. So thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for upcoming content.